I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio and Golden Rule Media and also Never Stop Entertainment. This is amazing. This is going to be an amazing interview. We have amazing people here today. I'm just so very excited. I mean, you know, this music that they did was just like, I mean, the backdrop to my life. I'm sorry. It was just like always there. Every party that I ever went to, and, and you know, I was a little kid. So it was a party where I was inside of the room and you know, everybody, everybody else was in the living room having a party and I was behind the TV. <laughs> but it was great because I grew up with this kind of music. I grew up listening to these guys and they're just still amazing and they're putting out new music they got songs out with beyonce i mean i'm just you know i'm just um i'm just a little person here my name is yaya diamond and here are the isley brothers welcome to the show guys all right now what's How up you doing? i'm doing good i'm doing great thank you guys so much for joining me so some people don't know you know, the story of the Isley Brothers, how you guys got started. There's just so many amazing stories out there of, you know, people getting started and rising to fame, even in the midst of not knowing that they're rising to fame. How did it happen for you guys? Well, if you, uh, I started off with the mother and father singing about two years old and singing in church songs. And my other brothers, uh, we were, were we, we developed a, a group about it about the time about the time I was up about five years old, and that's how it all started. My mother is a teaches music, you know, and uh, and they always wanted to have a quartet, and uh, that's what they had. We had had uh, first we had the four brothers, and later on, ten years later, we had uh, the other two brothers, Ernie and Marvin. And uh, when the, one day we knew we would uh, become self-contained and that we kind of had to wait for that to happen. Mm. I absolutely love that. I love that the parents actually stepped in. What was it like for you as, as things started to progress? And, you know, uh, maybe uh, Ernie can ask, answer this. As things started to progress, you know, and you guys kind of figured out that you were, you know, rising to fame or stardom, what was that like for you? Well, uh, for me, I had a chance to see my older brothers uh, performing. Uh, you know, I'd be sitting in a dark theater and uh, they'd hit the stage and the audience would go crazy. And <laughs> and that was a marvelous experience to uh, witness. And uh, later on, as I grew up and I became a musician, I had a chance to perform with them in uh, live. And, and that even made it uh, more of a thrill uh, for myself and uh, and uh, Marvin and Chris, uh, and uh, you know, we um, got into uh, eventually we got into the three plus three thing, uh, you know, with uh, that lady Summer Breeze and Harvest for the World and uh, Fight the Power and you know, Queen the Sheets, all this all this music that uh, actually uh, went technology wise. Uh, to the MTV uh, rap generation. I love it when you call me Big Pop, but it was between the sheets and uh, today was a good day. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have to use my AK. See you at the crossroads and uh, Aaliyah doing at your best, you were loved. So um, not to mention the fact that now, um, you know, we have um, Beyonce, you know, doing a duet uh, with Make me say it again, girl, which was a, a a hit, a monster hit all over again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. And it still is. And mm -hmm. it brings back that that memory, you know, that music is still rooted in, you know, the music that came out previously before like the 90s, before like the 70s and the 80s music was like the, the, the start of like this whole movement towards amazing music, amazing lyrics, amazing songwriting, groups, and people. How do you guys go about writing? Good well, question. <laughs> you write what you think you, if you feel first, and you write something that you think is going to mean something for the people, and uh, write about the things that they're doing, and uh, 
hope you have a successful year. Wow. Wow. And, and Ernie, how, how do you do that's it? That's my part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie, mm -hmm. how do you go about writing? That's a good question. Uh, you get inspired. First of all, you get you get inspired and, you know, the songs have a way of of uh, coming to you. Uh, fight the power or uh, at your best you are love uh, between the sheets. It has a way of of coming to you and uh, you bounce it off off the other brothers uh, to where we uh, get it to uh, sound the way we want it to sound. And uh, then when it comes out into the public and the way the public uh, embraced it was just uh, wow. So uh, we always have fun with that part of it. And I, I, I can't help but ask, you know, that whole that whole thing of you're getting on stage and you're getting ready to perform in front of the people and you get that reaction. What does that feel like to you? I mean, is that nirvana? Is that something that you search for every single time? I mean, do you love doing that? You search for it every time and you love doing it. You just just that's what you that's so so important to you. To, to, to see the response of the people and to feel the love from the people. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to, I, I kind of got to get an a idea of it being kind of like one of those things where, okay, this is the pinnacle of where we've arrived because of all the work that we've done. The people absolutely love it and they, and they cherish the music. And not only that, they appreciate that you've given your lives towards music. How does that feel to, to give your lives towards something that really truly means something to you? It means wow. everything. Like, like Ernie said, wow. <laughs> it means everything. You know, that's what we look forward to. That's that's the accomplishment that we that we that we get. We get you get that feeling that you give something to the people and people give the love right back to you like you want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, we all make mistakes, right? What was the biggest mistake that you guys made that really wasn't a mistake? It was kind of like, oh my gosh, that kind of turned out great. Mm. Mistake? Um, I can't say it was a mistake. Um, you know, there's... Sometimes the song can be uh, so big that it's going to override uh, what you might think uh, is a mistake. Uh, you know, um, we, thought, we thought we uh, thought uh, twist and shout was sort of like a mistake. Uh, it was it it wasn't the record that we planned for it to come out. We had planned for another record written by Burt Backrock, Hal Davis, to come out, and uh, and that didn't work. We did this, uh, we did this the song uh, "Twisted and Shout," and we did it for about three minutes, and the session was over, and we thought to ourselves, we didn't hear hit a record back. Yeah, it's kind of like a mistake, you know, and we were kind of disappointed. And the, I wonder when the, the DJ played it about three or four times. And one, it was one of the biggest records we had at the time. And it went on to be a, a big record for the, the Beatles uh, a couple of years later. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, I, I, the reason I ask you that is because a lot of people are scared to put stuff out because they don't think that it's going to resonate. Or when they put it out, they, they think that it is a mistake, like you, like you said, and then it resonates. So should we be afraid to do that should we be afraid to take risks should we just be afraid to put something out that we don't think it's going to go big no you have to roll the dice that's a part of it you have to roll the dice uh you don't know um the first time i heard it's your thing uh ronald was singing it in the uh front door of my mother's house you know and it starts obviously it starts out real little um but by the time uh, it gets into the studio and comes out, it is like a, 
a Frankenstein of a of a hit. So you have to roll the dice. That's a part of the a whole recording experience. You have to. You don't do that, you won't have nothing. You know, I, I've had so many people on the show and I love getting this advice from people who have gone before because a lot of people are scared and timid and they're scared to, to see their progress. They really are scared. But when when you jump out there and you do it, you just got to do it. And the record labels and, and the music industry and everything about the music business has changed so much. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice do each of you give to the people who are you know going after their goals and their dreams? Wow. You know, one, uh, you, if you asked me that 15 years ago, I told you uh, uh, one kind of question. But right now, you, <laughs> right, right now, the way the business is going now, uh, streaming, and we just we just put out a, a this album. Uh, we just now released the, the vinyl for the whole album. Uh, it's so it's. It's so much different. It's I don't like the way it is, but you know you just just follow how this is going, you know. And uh, you might have a better answer six months from now. A different uh, answer six months. Yeah. From yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. We had, I mean we 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 have album album out now, and it had, had a tremendous hit uh, with Beyonce, uh, and it and it, it lasted. Uh, Eight, eight to eight to nine months on the charts, ten uh, in the top ten, and it, top five and top six single for uh, the beginning of the album. Uh, wow. And now this this new record, uh, the, the last time, mm -hmm. is on its way to do the same thing. And I'm looking at it like some of the fans are looking at it like, wow, <laughs> but. I can't gauge it like I could gauge the previous records before this, the ones that came two, or two, or two, two years before this. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a different type of business. Yes, it was. It'll be changing like so rapidly. But you do have new music out. Tell me about your new album and putting out vinyl. I mean, I mean, I thought vinyl was dead. I mean, mm -hmm. CDs coming back. That's. I mean, you yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah. So tell me about that. The vinyl's coming back. So we were, you know, amongst the first people to, to notice that. And um, like Ernie said, we took a gamble. We said, hey, let's spend some money and put put the vinyl out, you know. And so that's what we did. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it will be successful. Uh, this, this particular album, we have a lot of rappers on it. Snoop Dogg. Rick Ross, Two Chain, uh, uh, Quavo, and Take Off, you know, and uh, Earth Wind and Fire, and Elder Boys, and Trey Song. You know, we put the kitchen sink on this album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before they can say, What's happening? Hey, don't tell me about the rappers. We, we got more rappers than you can name. <laughs> Doing their doing special raps, you know, and so we we look forward for it to do, and it's on our label, and so we can release what we want to release when we want to release, you know, and what we believe in. Mm -hmm. Having your own label too, I mean, mm -hmm. what's that like for you guys? Yeah, you, know, you get a chance to, you know, like I, like I said, uh, it costs a lot of money. And get, it's a bigger gamble than anybody would want to, want to take, you know. But if you have to believe in yourself and believe what you're doing, mm -hmm. in, in order for to be su successful with it, and and, and at this at this time in life, you know, you have I have to really believe in myself, you know, uh, because I want to I want to be successful, and I want the people to love what we're doing, so. We have to know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
you know, Ernie, as you sit here and you're, you're, you know, you're the youngest member of the Isley brothers, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, like you, you came in a little bit later after that you saw your brothers singing and performing. What is it like for you to be a part of this whole thing for so long and to see all of this growth, even from the outside, now you're inside? Well, actually, uh, my brother Marvin was the youngest oh. of, the, of the six brothers. Uh, no, he, I'm talking about, did you, number, in, did you come Marvin in Did you come in last? was brother number six. I'm brother number five. You're brother number five? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so cool to have so yeah. many brothers. Uh, yeah. Yes. Sisters? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, quite a perk to, to have. Uh, now you're asking um, what it was like? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, coming, I, I, mean, I know it's been a while, and I know, but you know, coming out from the outside, looking at it from the outside, you have a, another perspective even if it was so far, you know, even if it was a, a while ago, you still have that perspective of seeing them and now you're on the stage. What is that like for you? Well, actually, it was always from the inside. Mm. Um, you know, for, for uh, Marvin and I, because we are part of the family and uh, you have a chance to hear uh, twist and shout before they record it, actually, hear the demo, or you have a chance to hear, as I said before, to hear It's Your Thing, Ronald singing it in the doorway, you know, acapella. Mm -hmm. uh, you have it, and you know, when you see something like that and uh, it grows and it turns into something that you would never have imagined in terms of it being a, a hit and an influence, it's like your entire experience uh, for, for me, with uh, uh, my family, with the brothers, it was always, it's always been uh, from the inside. So um, in, in that way, we're not really surprised because we have a chance to see it when it's little. You know, you have a chance to hear uh, between the sheets before it comes on the radio. Yeah. yeah. And then when it comes on the radio, and, and the audience embraces it like that and then re-embraces it and re-embraces it. It's like, man, we came up with a song that is a bedrock for a lot of folks' um, musical careers. And we <laughs> had a number of songs like that. You know, uh, Paul McCartney said, um, Ernie, if it weren't for the Isley Brothers, Beatles would still be in Liverpool. Wow, thank you. <laughs> wow. So we've, we've had, you know, we've had a lot of uh, um, music and uh, the way it's embraced and the success, and you see it start out at a small level and it grow into um, a level that you would never have imagined. Uh, the fact that the music went from where it was in the '70s and then it got into the technology with the MTV and rap, and you see our music came back in a way that, uh, hey man, somebody reimagined it and uh, made it theirs, so, and, and, and embraced it. So it's been, um, wow, just, uh, you'd have to have lived it to really know and to, to have an understanding of it. And that makes what's going on right now even that much more, um, it's a good word. Appreciation yeah. for, for all of it. Yeah. And I always have a reason for asking these questions because there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that, you know, some of them are too young to actually join the group. So they get jealous or they, they, they envy their brothers or their sisters. But, you know, at, at certain moments, it's now time for you to join in. And I ask that because I don't want people to feel like as if they're excluded. You have something to do, but you just have to be where you're supposed to be at this moment. True. Mm -hmm. That will be that 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 one thing that we're doing. I'm doing now that I want to do, and I, I hope that and I know it will be successful. Uh, you know, our family is a, a, a pre family from the beginning, from the mother and father. Uh, it's it, it, any success we have is is normal, but we don't know, we don't know what we don't know exactly what's going to happen. It's gonna happen because 
our family is a prayed up family. And we got we we have God's blessing in, with everything that we try to do. I hear you. I hear you. Definitely, definitely. Well, my gosh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. This is the Isley Brothers, guys, and I know you have heard them so many times. Please get the album. Which What is the name of the new album that's out right now? Make me, make me say it again, girl. That's Ooh. the name of the album. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this new single is the no, last, last time. Last time. I would like to say God bless everybody for hanging with us for 64 years and, and, and still hanging with us. You know, God bless you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fans have been tremendous with their uh, musical support from all around the world and through the generations. Thank you so much. Thank you.